In this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how you can freeze rows, freeze columns. So what that means is that they're always going to stay and froze, frozen. So if you have a lot of data that you're going through, this is a good way to see the headings of those columns. Also, how you can hide rows and columns and what your options are when you select them. So you can either hide them or you could show them. There's uh, some resizing options as well. So fit to the data. So we're going to be going over some of those. And then also, most importantly, how we can sort contents that are contained within a particular column and as well how the spreadsheet will behave with the sorting action. So in this case, if we want to sort the entire sheet according to what we've got here within column G under the header numbers, we can do that as well. So go either, either going into the data when we select a range and the, just selecting the short, sort range and then using the data as a header and selecting via the header. This also gives us an option to do sorting and managing the sorting of the spreadsheet. So all of this and a whole lot more is coming up in this lesson. We're going to look at different options for viewing content. Now a lot of times when you do have a row, I'm just adding in a new row, you might have the headings in the top row. So I'm just going to add in some headings there in the top. So this can be the last name, this is the topic, and maybe this is just uh, the full name and ID. So sometimes you might want to make those bold so that they do stand out differently. And if you've got a whole bunch of content that you are scrolling down, it's also useful in many cases to be able to see what the headings are of those columns, especially if you have a lot of data that you're sorting down. So there is a way to freeze the rows. You can select one row, you could select multiple rows, depending on how many rows of headings you have. So I'm just going to be selecting the top row, so selecting the one in the left-hand side of the rows, and then I'm going to right-click that, and then going down to the bottom where we've got the view more actions, I've got the top option is to freeze up to one row. And what freezing the one row now does is, as I scroll down to row 48, I can still see the heading information here at the top. So this is a really useful way to see that content. If I want to unfreeze it, I can select it. And going back down to the bottom, I can unfreeze the row. If I had multiple rows of content, I could select, I could select several rows. and group the rows, freeze the one row. So if I group the rows, now I'm not gonna have the option to freeze more than one row, so even if I have selected them, if I go down to the options, I only have the option to freeze up to one row. So it'll always just try to freeze that one row. I do have more options when I go under the view tab at the top here, where I can freeze no rows, I can freeze one row, two rows, I can also select the columns to freeze. So if I want to freeze two rows, that will allow me to freeze the two rows, and I don't have to actually select them, I can just go under the view and do the freeze. If I don't want to or want to remove the freeze, I can select the no rows, and that will allow me to just uh, have no rows that are frozen, so that will allow me to remove the freeze. If I want to freeze row six, I can freeze up to row six, so that will freeze everything to row six. And again, if I want to remove it, I can unfreeze the rows. If I want to freeze the first two rows, I can select the row that I want to freeze up to and select freeze up to row two. So that will allow me to freeze multiple rows or as many rows as I needed with all of the rows at the top being frozen up to whatever the selection row that I've made. Also under view, I can update the view or I can remove out the formula bar. So if you're not using formula within your spreadsheets, you can remove that from the view. That will give you a little bit more space. Uh, also the grid lines. So removing the grid lines between the cells. And usually, obviously, because this is a spreadsheet, we do prefer to keep the grid lines in. And then, of course, the formulas are optional. So you can also 
show the formulas or hide the formula bar. So let me add in some formulas here. And here we'll just do a sum of the value of E plus 100. So that's our formulas. And also when you do create a formula, it will have the suggestion for autofill. Uh, so this is an example of where it's making a suggestion of autofilling the formula all the way down. So you can either accept it with the check mark or reject the suggestion and then that way it won't autofill the formula. And by selecting it, you're going to see that it's showing all of the formulas that we're using. So that's because the view is set to show the formulas. If we don't want to show the formulas, we only want to show the results, then we can uncheck that. And now we're back to seeing the results, which is the default view under the show. There's also the protected ranges. So if we do have certain ranges that we want to set as protected ranges, where we're selecting some content, right clicking it, and then selecting it as a protected range. You can enter in a description, set the permissions, who has options to edit that content, who, and also show different warnings when they're editing that range. Uh, so this gives you the list of the users that currently are able to edit. So if I want to remove another user from being able to edit that range, then I can do that as well, and that will lock the range from that editor, that other user being able to edit it. So under view, if I go to show, I can show and I can see the protected ranges on the screen. And the protected range that actually is going to be for myself. And let's set permissions. So I'm going to remove And we're just going to show a warning when anyone's editing this range. So again, going back to show and let's show the protected ranges. And the way that the protected ranges will be identified within the sheet is this strike through pattern that this indicates that this is a protected range. And if I do try to edit it, it's going to give me a heads up warning that I'm trying to edit a part of the range that has been set as a protected range. So this is a way that you can set content and also let others know that certain content should not be changed. And if you are using protected ranges, uh, it is also a good idea to set the view for the protected ranges. By default, it's not going to be set. Uh, but of course, if you do try to edit them, you're going to still get that same warning message that you are editing a protected range. So they actually work independently, even though you're not going to be able to see them, but you're going to be able to have the results uh, of that protected range, regardless of whether you can see which part of the, the spreadsheet is protected or not. So we've already covered the freeze. So we're able to also freeze columns. So if we want to freeze the first two columns, we can do that as well, where that's freezing the first two columns. And unfreezing. So going back under view, there's also an option to group. So what group will do is if you don't have anything selected, it'll ask you to group the row, group the column, and select what you want to group. And then you can also right click it. And under the view more column actions, you can group the, col the selected columns. And because this is a protected range, I'm going to get that warning message. And when I group them together, then that also gives me this icon where I can hide and I can show them from the view because now they're grouped together. I'm actually going to get rid of the protected range. And there's the protected range. So let's uh, remove the protected range and also remove the who can edit the specific range. So that's going to remove out the protected range. And now I'm not going to get that error message when I'm grouping column B and C together and hiding and showing them. So what grouping does is it just allows us to keep those particular columns 
within the same grouping. There's a few other items that I want to cover before we conclude. Uh, so there is also, whenever we go view more cell actions, you can randomize the range. So what this will do is this will update the order of the items in the range. So I'm going to just create a quick set of data from 1 to 10. We'll select that data, go under the view more cell actions, and we're going to randomize it. So what randomized did it, it basically the selected range, it randomized the items in the selected range and reordered them. And if you select this again, you can again do the randomizing and that will randomize the items of that selected range. Uh, to undo it, you can just do a edit, undo or control Z, and that will allow you to undo it and bring it back to the original order that you wanted it within. There's also under the view more cell actions, there's define named ranged. So if you want to have it as a named range, then you could reference it as needed. And we're going to look at that a little bit more later on that when why we'd want to name a range uh, so that we could reference it within other parts of our Google spreadsheet. If you have grouped columns and you want to remove the grouping, you can right click and this will give you an option where you can collapse the column group, remove the group, expand the column groups, collapse all group column groups, and then you can move uh, using the plus or minus button to the right. So let's open that up and actually we're going to move the button. So just moved it over slightly. You can also move it back if you want. Uh, you can open up that and you can remove the grouping of that uh, selected range. So those are some of the options that you have in order to view the content and as well once you've selected a range, some of the options that you have to interact with uh, the range content. And we're going to look at the data validation and conditional formatting in the upcoming lessons. There's also the sort option. So let's select the range that we want to interact with, go down to view more cell actions and do the sort range. When we select the sort range, it selects the range that we want to sort from. Uh, the data has a header in the row. Uh, so this case, because we've selected it within the mid part of the rows, we're not selecting the top row, so we don't need to check that off. But I'll give you an example of that as well, uh, checking that off. The sort by column, so column G, and this is the column that has been selected. So we can select it and sort it either ascending or descending. Uh, so if currently it's going to be ascending, so let's sort it descending. You can also add another sort column. So if we want to sort also an additional column, so let's add in a sort the second column that we want, and we don't actually have the selection of that. And I'll show you how you can select those later on. So let's go ahead and do the sort. And now when we look at it, what happened is that we sorted that selected range. If we want to, we can sort the entire column. And if you go over the column, there's going to be a drop down arrow and selecting that will give you the same options where you could copy, cut, paste, paste special, you can insert columns, you can delete the entire column, you can clear the contents, you can hide the column, you can resize it. And then in the middle there, you've got the sort options from sort A to Z. So that's ascending and descending. And then there's also the same options that we saw before, where we've got the view more column actions. And this gives you the ability to freeze up to column G. So it'll freeze everything up to column G. Uh, you can group the column, convert it to links, remove the links, open up the links, get links in the range. And then you can also randomize that selected range, define the named range. So there's a lot of options there. Let's go ahead and we're going to go with the sort. And what the sort did is it automatically sorted it. But notice that it did keep the header because it was smart enough to know that this is the header. So it kept the header and even though it sorted it from the top down, it kept the header and even we had sorted and selected that entire range. 
So selecting the column that you want to sort and then going up at the top, you've got an option under data where you can sort sheet by column G, A to Z, or column G, ascending or descending. And then in addition, you can sort the range. So right now we've only got the range, but if we want to sort the entire sheet, column G or the selected range, we can do the sort and this will actually sort it and notice what's happened here is that we ended up sorting the headers. So we definitely don't want to do that. We want to keep the headers as is and sort everything according to what we've got within the selected column. So let's go back to it. So let's select multiple columns within the range and then we'll do the applying the sort where we're sorting the A to Z. So what we want to do is we want to sort the entire selection. So we've selected all of the cells we want to sort by and under date data. So we're not going to short the sort the sheet because this will sort everything, including the headers. We want to go to sort range and then select the advanced range sorting options. And here we've got the option for data as header row. So we want to make sure that we're not sorting by the header row. And once we do select that, we have an option using the headers in order to select what we want to sort by. So if we want to sort that column G, which is identified with the header of numbers, and then now we can do it either ascending or descending. So let's select it descending and do the sort. So that actually sorted all of the content, but kept the headers intact. And that's one way that you can make sure that you're not Moving your headers when you're doing the sort, select the columns that you want to use within the range that you want to use, and those columns are the ones that are going to be affected by the sort. And then you have the option, once you select the headers, to use those headers as the sort order for the rest of the sheet contents. And another way to do that is to select the top row and just do a freeze of the first row. And this way, whenever you do the sort, it's not going to be sorting the rows. It's just going to keep them as frozen. And this will give you an option that you can simply select and do the sort. So that's another way that you can make sure that your headers don't get sorted. And this is another way that you can tell your spreadsheet how to behave when doing the sorting.